forgot to take yesterday's. I'll just take another one today. It shouldn't matter. This is, my name is Press. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling really terrible, I, really awful. I think I took too much medication. I took yesterday's pills and today's pills together and I, I feel real woozy. And, um, could I speak to, to the doctor? One of our members is on several prescription medications. He came down with a cold, so he went to the pharmacy and got some over-the-counter cold medication. After he took the medication, it reacted with his prescribed medication. As a result, he became extremely ill and was rushed to the emergency room. The pills we take help us deal with medical conditions. They improve our function, they help us go about our daily duties. But these wonder drugs contain a hidden danger if they're misused or if we develop a negative side effect and we ignore that or we don't tell our doctor right away. I think the, the bad news is that medication errors right now are resulting in, the estimates are approximately 7,000 deaths per year. So that's two September 11ths per year of people dying from medication errors. And another million people a year being injured by medication errors. The Institute of Medicine uh, was estimating, and just from the inpatient hospital side of this, the 10% of hospitalizations that are resulting from uh, these errors and the injuries being caused by the errors, they estimate that to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 3.5 to $5 billion a year. I think that people over-medicate. I think that people as a whole, whether they're elderly or young, there is a tendency to just go look for something that'll treat any kind of condition that you have. With the elderly, and I think in our previous discussions we talked a little bit about this, that the most widely abused class of drugs in the elderly are laxatives. So let's look at some of the simple problems that occur. Uh, number one, uh, we're trying to get as a culture to a point where we have no more handwritten prescriptions. For years that was a problem. And we've done that here. We try to do all of our prescriptions electronically. So we're in the exam room together, we pick the medication, we pick what pharmacy, we fax a typed out form that goes to the pharmacist. And then it also gets entered electronically into your drug profile of current medications that you're taking. Confusion uh, with the medication. For a long time, Wisconsin did not allow the name, putting the brand and generic name on prescription labels. So a doctor would say, I'm gonna prescribe Lasix, then they would go to the pharmacy and the insurance would require that the pharmacy fills it with furosemide. And somebody would get home and say, well, the doctor wants you taking Lasix, but well, I have this furosemide, is that the same thing? The hard part for patients uh, and for everybody involved in this process is that drugs have two names. You have a generic name and you have a brand name. So let me just give you, take one simple example and look at all the potential error points along the way in a patient who's on just one drug, and I'm gonna call this drug Zyac, it's a high blood pressure medication, and see what can happen as he goes from the office to the hospital back to home. You would think it would be very simple. He's on Zyac, goes in the hospital, they decide to keep him on it, and then he goes home on it. Well, first of all, uh, Zyac has another name, the generic name is bisopropyl hydrochlorothiazide. 
So let's say on a particular weekend, this patient says, well, I see there's a special at Pharmacy X. They're giving a discount. So I go there and they give me the medication. And they say, do you want the brand name or generic? So you say, you want the generic. So they put the generic name, bisopropyl hydrochlorothiazide. The person takes it home. But maybe another weekend, they go to a different pharmacy and the pharmacist put on it the brand name, uh, Zyac. And now the patient has both bottles at home. If the person is, is, has any kind of cognitive impairment, any type of confusion, all of a sudden they're going, well, Zyac, bisopropyl, well, I guess they're two different things. They take one of each and now a medication error has occurred. They have overdosed on hypertensive. They bottom out. They have a fall. They fracture a hip. They end up in the hospital. And that's just one. People also get very confused about when they're taking a medication, whether or not they are allergic to it or they're having a side effect. And what I try to tell people is that every drug you take is going to have some kind of effect on your body, both good and bad. I will see very often people who say they're allergic to coding, which is a very inexpensive, a very effective pain reliever. And when you ask them, how are you allergic to it? What happens when you take it? They say, well, it hurts my stomach or it makes me sleepy. No, codeine irritates the stomach. It causes drowsiness. Those are side effects. That's not an allergy. A couple that's uh, living independently, uh, 91 years old and 88 years old. Okay. Uh, now, they both have a psychotropic med. One, one of the, the, the 91-year-old is taking meds not only for anxiety but for dementia. Uh, the wife is taking medication for anxiety. And um, so he runs out of his pills on a Saturday night. So he says, well, you have a nerve pill. I have a nerve pill. I'm going to take your nerve pill. So, you know, uh, so then they, they start sharing medications. Huge thing I have to stress over and over and over is don't take someone else's medications. And where I see it happen the most is with the elderly, with spouses. And so that while an antibiotic may work for a certain person, the other, another person might be allergic to it. They may have other medications they're taking that would be complicated with it. They may have underlying conditions that would compromise the person if indeed they took it. I remember one time I went to visit my mother in Florida and she was telling me, she says, oh, you know, she was at the Mahjong group with her lady friends and her son is the doctor. So she says, well, you know, uh, Ethel was telling me that, you know, she's got, you know, palpitations and she takes this pill and it works really good for her. So I asked her to give me some of hers. Well, yeah, she was on digoxin for atrial fibrillation. I'm going, mom, no, you, no don't, you don't, don't do that. The elderly especially have multiple medications. There's any number of medications that they are taking for different conditions, whether it's blood pressure, whether it's diabetes, with it. And sometimes people get confused as to exactly what medication should be taken when. Plus, they will then go and buy over-the-counter medications, antacids or laxatives, other medications for cough or cold that they take on top of everything else. So just the sheer number of medications that some of the elderly are taking create confusion. So they ration their pills by taking a lower dose. They go from one pharmacy to another pharmacy to another pharmacy looking for bargains. Uh, they send it off to the Canadian uh, pharmacies to get something inexpensive. They try to get by maybe by taking an over-counter thing that they see an ad for that is described as something that's good for your diabetes or good for your cholesterol or good for your uh, you know, for arthritic pain or good for migraine headaches. And so they start getting these concoctions of things going uh, that no one knows they're taking. The pills that our doctors prescribe for us are specifically designed to care for and to relieve a variety of ailments and medical conditions. And we all develop those as we get older. But it's up to us to make sure and to pay attention to how we use what's in these containers. doctor does give you a prescription, you want to know why you're going to be taking this. What, why am I taking this? What can I expect to have happen? And you should be asking the doctor at the same time, exactly how do I take it? Do I take it once a day? Do I take it in the morning? When do I take this? How do I take this? How long do I take this? And you should be asking the doctor what are the side effects with that? So you know what they are when they occur. 
And then the last question that you want to ask the doctor, is there a generic for this drug? And whenever possible, you want to use a generic drug because, yes, they are, in my opinion, equally effective to the brand name product and substantially less expensive with it. Once you've gone to the doctor and gotten the prescription, you're going to ask the same questions of the pharmacist. If every single patient had in their wallet that simple list, what the names of my medications are and why I'm taking it, the, the, the prevention of errors would be enormous. So we haven't evolved to the same place as Kohl's, Target, and the banking industry in medicine, where all these different computer vendors and computerized medical record systems have a common repository where they can at least put critical inf information that can be shared across the different platforms. And if they go to a doctor who has an electronic record system like I can, they can just say, can you print me a list? We have a thing called the patient-friendly medication list. I can just hit a button, I can print them what I think they're on. They can then take that home, or their daughter can take it home for an elderly parent and compare it to their meds at home and say, oh yeah, well this, this is what they're taking. I have a hearing loss, so sometimes I, I don't catch everything exactly the same. Well, the elderly as a whole have usually diminished hearing, and so sometimes they will not hear something correctly. So to have a family member along or a friend along, somebody who can listen and take in that information would be very valuable. When you can have a family member uh, come along who you can give that list to, uh, and, they, and also they can also help tell you about other medications uh, that the patient may be taking that are over the counter. You should also tell the pharmacist and the doctor, for that matter, any over the counter meds that you are taking. Are you taking antacids? If you're taking antacids, you certainly don't want to take it when you're taking a medication for thyroid because it will inactivate it. Especially for elderly patients, kidney function is critical in dosing of many medications. People can have a mild kidney impairment, and that will affect the dosage of what they take. If they're on Cipro for a urinary tract infection, it, the dosage may have to be cut in half or 25% of what the normal dosage is because they have a mildly impaired kidney. By Wisconsin law, a prescription is only good for one year from when it was written. It's done both in terms of legal standards that a pharmacy cannot refill a prescription beyond a year, but it's also done from a practical sense that uh, unlike fine wine, drugs do not improve with time, that they actually diminish in potency over a period of time. However, from a practical standpoint, it is not a good idea to keep medications after a year's time, and that, yes, you should get rid of them. So having a pill box where once a week you lay out your pills, morning pills, afternoon pills, and you have this dispenser, once a week they just lay out the pills. And there's nice little devices for doing that. Many people keep their medications uh, in, the, uh, in the bathroom, which is, tends to, when you take showers, it gets steamed up, it gets moist, and therefore medications deteriorate more. So the bathroom is the worst place to keep your medications. You don't want to keep them somewhere that is sunny and bright, so you want to keep them in a cool and dry place uh, and not have them in the bathroom. Elderly people will have little, you know, kids over, grandchildren, you got to make sure, especially if you transfer them to those pill boxes. Now, many of those are a lot easier to open, those weekly or monthly uh, pill dispenser things that you keep those out of reach. The patient needs to ask questions. The patient needs to understand how they are going to take this, why they are taking this, what can they expect to have happen from this, and then they need to follow through on that. There have been studies done on a whole that have indicated that uh, most people don't really do that, and that on the whole, roughly 44 cents out of every dollar spent on prescriptions is wasted because people don't take it correctly, they don't get it filled, they don't follow through on these things. And yet, if you ask questions, if you make sure that you understand what you need to do here, and if you follow through with taking the medication, then the odds are that not only are you going to get your money's worth out of the prescription, your health will be maintained. And isn't that what we're doing this all for in the first place? We need to listen to our doctors and pharmacists when they're prescribing our medications, when they're telling us how and when to take them. Write down the instructions. 
or have them write them down. They'll be glad to do that for you. We also need to tell all our doctors, and many of us see more than one doctor, we need to tell all our doctors all the different medications that we're on. And this is really important. Only take the medication that is specifically prescribed for you. Don't offer your medication to somebody else, and don't take medication that somebody offers you. And that is going to help you to more fully enjoy your golden years.